Hey everyone, welcome to Task Sequencer. My name is Rakesh Sahu, and today we are going to create a fully configured virtual machine with PowerShell in Microsoft Azure Cloud. Now, we know we can create virtual machines by using uh, different other methodologies like directly through the uh, portal or Azure Resource Manager tam templates. Uh, apart from that, we can still also use something called as, uh, Azure CLI, that's a command line interface which Azure is providing. But today I'm going to show you how we can create a virtual machine by using uh, PowerShell. So where this approach will come into play is, in a, in I, as an example, I can give you like, uh, when you are in an enterprise environment, where you have to create like n number of virtual machines in a very short span of time like enterprise needs around 80 virtual machines to be created with uh, different kind of configurations based on uh, their requirements you cannot simply go to portal and create one by one it is a very cumbersome task to achieve this goal we need to script out the way in which we can create a virtual machine and in this kind of situation the PowerShell's power has come into play where we can play with scripts we can declare variables and by using um, uh, PowerShell's module which is therefore a zero out there we can create um, as many virtual machines we want by using the script which I'm going to show in the video so without any further ado let me start off I'm, I'm opening my Azure I, sorry, uh, PowerShell ISC so that I can show you the side-by-side -side, uh, informations based on what script I'm going to use and, and how I'm going to implement that into my Azure subscription directly by using PowerShell. So let me open the PowerShell script. Right, so we are going to see the PowerShell script. I have already made this. I have given uh, this demo one PowerShell script. So here you can see the PowerShell script uh, I have opened here. Now, before we can start uh, the script, we have to make sure we are logged into our Azure account. So I'll do a CD slash, go to the root drive and um, do a CLS so that I can scratch do from scratch. Next, I have to do is uh, okay. Bef uh, uh, another thing to be noted here is that make sure you have uh, added the module for uh, logging into the Azure cloud. That is Azure PowerShell module. It is directly available in internet. I'll try to put uh, more information like the links and how to access it and how to install it in my show notes in, of this video. So let's start again. Uh, I'll log in to my Azure account. I have already installed the module. So here you can see it is already showing that. Let me punch in my credentials. So my name is Rakesh Sahu. My Hotmail ID I'll try to put in. Uh, then it will ask me for my password so for in this for moment i will try to pause my screen all right so uh, it was uh, it was able to log in successfully so if you are able to log in successfully you'll be able to see something like this it will show you what's the environment you have logged in your subscription ids all those details you can see which are not useful at the moment. I'll do a CLA so that I can do a clean slate. Now, let's start uh, uh, creating of a virtual machine by using PowerShell, by using scripted. So this is what I'm going to do. So first and foremost is obviously we are going to declare some variables. So the first variable, all this declaration, I'll try to put in at a time. So first one is the resource group. So I have given it name as TS demo one resource group. Then the location I'll give uh, West Europe and uh, the VM name. So it will be called as TS demo one VM. So uh, just pull in those details here and that's it. So we have to give create a no, we have to create a user object for this virtual machine which we are creating. So let me run this part and it will ask for the credentials because we are going to log into a 
Windows virtual machine. So definitely we need the credentials to be put into. So let me give uh, username as tsdemo1 and password I'll give some generic one which is I'm always using and then click OK. So the first part of our script is now completed. And next we have to create a resource group where this virtual machine is going to be created. And let me run that. So uh, it will take uh, the resource group name from the one which we have already declared here and the location which we have been already pointed to. So you can see here. Okay, it is provisioned successfully, so it, this part is succeeded. Now, obviously, to, to access a virtual machine, we need the network configurations required. So, we need the subnet, we need the virtual network in which it will be connected to, we need the public IP by which we can connect to, and obviously, we need to give an inbound uh, network uh, security group rule for so that we can do a RDP so that what that's why we have to give a bound rule open for like opening this port for port number 3389 for accessing the virtual machine so all this information to a security group um, because this is how Azure understands all this informations and okay now coming back to uh, creating our uh, subnet here uh, just uh, toss this, run this. It should be able to create successfully the subnet group. Let me see what happens. Next, obviously, we have to create a virtual network. For that, uh, let me run this part here. So here you can see something called as warning the output object type of this command. It will be modified in a future release. As we all know, Azure is still improving its features. And on a daily basis, we are seeing a lot many changes. Last year, we used to follow the ASA methodology. And now we have to follow the ARM, the Azure Resource Management methodology. So uh, overall, we are seeing many changes. So similarly, all this information which we are seeing in this module, this commandlets, will be changing on a regular basis. So you can see here the virtual network, how it is creating. It's uh, calling this commandlet in which a new Azure RM virtual network. And we are gen uh, choosing uh, the uh, resource group, something called as resource group. Obviously, we have already declared that, so we are calling that. So we, rather than writing that again, same thing. The variable information are pulled in here. Here we are creating a, a VNet. I have given this name as tsdemo one VNet. The address prefix, related, all this information. So all this information which we have put in our previous sections or previous, uh, I am able to put. Now, obviously, after we create the virtual network, we have to give a public IP to that so that we can connect our RDP session directly from internet. So sorry, I'll do a run. So you can see you will be encountered with this kind of warnings. Don't be afraid of this. This is something which is saying that this may change someday. And uh, at the moment, it is something like this. So, so all in all, so now after this, we have to create the net inbound network security group rule for opening port 3310 for RDP connection. Let me copy that out. Yep, it did very quickly. So this port is open now. Now we'll put all this information into a security group. So definitely I will try to run that now. So here you can see the security group, what all information it has to capture. It has put all information into uh, the details which are required. So. So the NSG rule we have set for RDP. So similarly, we have approach in which we are looking into. After all the security group creation, we'll now create the NIC card for our virtual machine. So like we have a physical NIC card, similarly, we have to have a virtual NIC card configured, which will be able to talk with my, it will be working as a, an interface between the virtual network and my virtual machine. So the way we have our physical NIC card, the way it does this work. So I'll run this script. It will be fairly easy for editing cells of you. So all the information have been put into in which my virtual network card has been done. So the networking is done, the resource group related to everything has been taken care of, and now 
we are moving into a next session. Uh, so the virtual machine which we are going to create, uh, which has a detail based on the information which we are going to put into. Like when we go forward and create a virtual machine in um, a portal, definitely we go into look into different information like what kind of virtual machine name we are going to give, then what kind of virtual machine size we are going to put in, uh, and uh, that, uh, what operating system will go into that virtual machine, what different credentials it has to take. All this information we have captured by using different variables which we have declared in previously in our script so that it will be pretty easy and it will we can manage multiple virtual machine at the same time or create multiple virtual machines by using the powers of uh, variables in a PowerShell script. Now you can see here the script looks to be straightforward in which uh, let me uh, try to run it and then we can see one by one. So this is what it's creating here. It is giving a virtual machine name, then the size. We see that is different sizes available. I've taken a standard uh, underscore D1 sizes. This all details are available uh, in Azure portal on different size which uh, you have to look into. Then uh, what kind of uh, operating system will go into this command it is asking. So it will be Windows, then the computer name. Um, based on like we have already declared the computer name on the top. What is this credentials? We have initially before starting the thing we have already declared the credentials part also. Then uh, the publisher name obviously we are going to create a Microsoft Windows Server uh, uh, virtual machine. So what is there? So it will be a 2016 data center and obviously the version should be latest all this information and then we attack the NIC card which we created just above. So now the virtual machine configurations have been created. The last but not the least, we have to now create the virtual machine out of the configuration everything which we have captured in our previous sections and then uh, run it. So this is the most time taking part because it will try to accumulate all the information which we have gathered so far into different resource group and create out all the resources. So now all the resources are getting accumulated based on the requirements put in for the virtual machine, the final virtual machine to which we are going to take an RTP. Uh, let me log into the portal. So this is a script which I showed here and uh, this is how Oh, each and every step. So it's, it's a very basic script and it's just simply we are going to create uh, a basic virtual machine by using the different uh, information provided to us in, in a scripted approach. Um, though this part of our virtual machine creation is the most time taking one. Maybe it takes around um, two to five minutes depends upon your network speed. Now let me open a uh, my in private window. So every time I log into my portal, I do by using in private or in Chrome, we say that cognito, incognito mode. So let me log into my portal.seo.com to see how my virtual machine is looking like. All right. Uh, so I have, I was unlogged in before. That's why I did asking, prompting me that I have already logged in, but if you are logged in for the first time, definitely it will prompt you uh, to give your credentials. Okay, so it should have asked me my password anyways. I was logged into same window and just I signed out from it. That's why it's showing like this. All right, this is a uh, new portal. Hence port looks like with all the, my subscription in information, I'll close it. Let me see what all things have been going on, anything done, anything going on, completed. Let me go and see if my that virtual machine has been created. So we looked into that information. We have given our virtual machine name. If you remember, it is TS Demo 1. So let's see if we have TS Demo. Yep. So the virtual machine is here called as TS Demo 1 VM. Let me see if I am able to see the further information required for this. So it is saying it is creating the status. You can see here it is saying the status still creating as my script, which 
was here it's still creating it hasn't completed you can have not seen anything information related to complete answer so it's still creating it takes its own sweet time so we'll come back uh, as soon as it is uh, showing run uh, status as running all right now you can see here the status is now running it shows that means my virtual machine is created and it has logged into the virtual machine or just started my virtual machine up so uh, before I can click connect and do let me see what happened in my PowerShell all right now you can see here it is saying request ID is the success status code true status code okay and reason that means my virtual machine has been successfully created I'll go to my console and see and the same running status it's still showing creating but it's already have been created let me do a refresh rather than going to a refresh I'll just go to my activity log and come back and see what's how it's looking like mm -hmm. right so many different things here let me come back so that it will do a refresh before I can try to do an RDP to my screen so yep you can see here now I'll just click connect it will try to open an RDP um, information sorry RDP um, shortcut so I'll try to save that it and now went yep. it is prompting me something like that this is the public IP which is given to the given to the remote desktop connection I'll click connect and see here it is asking me uh, to prompt my credentials as I haven't joined this machine that a server into any domain I'll just give work group and the name I think I have I remember if I remember it was TS demo one I'll give the password which I gave that time and click OK can see here it is showing me to log into the machine which we had given which we have created just now here you can see it's trying to join so we had given server 2016 data center edition so that is what it's getting all the information which have been put into going on it now it should be fine let me see what happens yep you can see here all the informations are here so this is the virtual machine we just now created so rather giving all the information one so I'm not even it has chosen some information um, based on uh, the template available out there so you all this information the B chain for is also available in which talks about what what all things have been positioned sorry provision on this virtual machine so this was a short uh, video which I just showed now here in which how we can create a virtual machine by using a PowerShell script thank you for joining um, seeing thank you for watching this video and we'll try to put uh, more like this in future bye